Hello, welcome to Mel Made. My name's Mel and this is a podcast all about the things that I have made. I am a hobby knitter and I'm based in the northeast of England. I love knitting garments mainly, but I do sometimes stray into sort of accessories and things like that. And there's a tiny bit of sewing, although I haven't done much of that very recently. We are having very mild weather for Christmas. We did get some snow earlier in December, but uh, and we thought we might be getting a white Christmas, but we are not. It's Christmas Eve today. There's a robin outside, which is lovely. And there's lots and lots to do, but knitting comes first. So I thought I will record and get an, an episode out there because it's been a few weeks since I last recorded. So we'll start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Betty and Judy Lodge sweater. I'm really pleased with it. I might even put a picture of this up. Does it always come here or here? I'll put one up. I don't know if you can see there. It's a really lovely fitted vintage style Christmas knit. This is, let me see the holly. I'm really proud of this. I really, really like it. There's intarsia for the holly leaves. It's obviously got a white panel here. There is, if I turn around, if you can see, I've got my t-shirt underneath, so it's sticking out a bit. There is a peep hole, back piece. I might put a picture of that up. There's a little hole and a little button at the back. This was a really, really um, quick and easy knit. I knitted it in Cascade 220. That's a worsted weight. And it's knitted, you start here and then you do the back and then you do the front. And it's all in one piece and then you add in the sleeves and then you do the body. Um, there's puffed sleeves here. I didn't decrease though. I've done the puffs and I did the um, increases here. And then you are supposed to decrease so you get more of a, a, ploof, a floofy, <laughs> floofy sleeve on the shoulder. I quite like a loose sleeve though, so I just kept going and uh, stopped at three quarter length. I know lots of people have done a lovely one that stops there, which also looks really pretty. And some people have done full length ones if you look at the project pages on Ravelry. Um, and what else to say it was quick it was easy it was really really fun I started this in I think the beginning of November I knew I'd have it done for Christmas and it's got a lot of wear over the last I don't really get really Christmassy till December so I think since December started I would say it's got quite a lot of wear um it's not even pilled very much it has a little bit because you know first few weeks of wear but I, I'm quite pleased this cascade just pulling a bit off there this Cascade 220 does seem to be pretty good with the sort of, it's wool, it's 100%, I think it's 100% wool. It's non-superwash. And yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's wearing. And this shorter sleeves mean I can wear it if there's heating on inside and things like that. And um, I went to Lumley Castle for Christmas afternoon tea with my knitting group and I wore it there. And someone else had the same one. They knitted the same pattern, but they'd done theirs in a lovely grey, which looked really, really nice as well. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with this. I'd recommend it. It's a uh, pattern by Poison Girls. And the colours I used, I think they were just numbers. It's basically like a burgundy, like a natural white. And then I think just like a mid, a mid green. That's not really helping. I know if I can find the colour types, I will put them below or put them on the screen. So that is my one finished object and also what I'm wearing. Moving on to other finished objects, I have got my Magnolia cardigan. Oh, Magnolia Bloom cardigan, I should say. I'm going to put this on, not for long, because it is really warm and I don't need a two layers of thick wool today. It's not really warm, it's like, I don't know, 10 degrees, but still. This is so beautiful and I love it so much. I might put a picture up of this as well. It's knitted in lama, this is, this is one skein I've got left over, lama moir, if I'm saying that right, wool, and that is from Scotland. It's simply Shetland Aran. It's really sheepy and lovely and I think this is a natural colour. It's called Smur and it's a 10, weight 10 WPI not quite sure what that stands for but it is an aran which is slightly heavier than a worsted and oh it's very woolly I also used cumulus 
Fibre Spates Cumulus, which is an alpaca silk combination that I use all the time instead of mohair, slightly thicker than mohair, and I use the colour Slate. And the pattern is by Camilla Vad, I don't know if I'm saying pronouncing that right. And she uses, I think, two strands of a four ply, perhaps, or is it two strands of a... No, so she uses, it might be a worsted weight or a DK with two strands of mohair. And I experimented with my gauge and it turned out I got really, I think I had to go up a needle size, but I got a really nice fabric with the Aran and one strand of the Cumulus. So that's what I've used. And I don't know if you can see close up that they've mixed in. I, at first I, I swatched with these ages ago before I hurt my elbow and I thought, oh, that's not going to work because I'd, I'd, there, there's a, the slate's a bluey grey and this is more, I think, a browny grey. I don't know if that's coming out there. And I didn't, sh I wasn't sure how they would mix. But actually, I just think the way they've mixed in is just really beautiful and it gives like a nice sort of two-tone depth, maybe, to the colour. The fabric as well with blocking is, this is a very rustic, well, it, it, it's, it doesn't feel really scratchy, but it's a little bit rough. But mixed with the alpaca and silk and then blocked, it is not drapey, but it's just snuggly and soft and lovely. So I'm really, really pleased with this and how it turned out. I think I talked about this quite a bit on my previous episode, so I won't go on too long. The lace pattern I found a little bit challenging, but I um, I do find lace a bit stressful. But it's worth it with the effects. I'm not normally a bobble person, but I absolutely love the bobbles. And I had to tighten them up and there is a technique for tightening them up. One of you lovely viewers put advice for bobble tightening in and I can't remember, I'll try and put it here what it was. It was a video of this uh, this lady that was tightening bobbles and it's so clever and it, you don't need any thread or anything. It's almost just like you can just like pull a certain strand out and go over and tighten the bobbles that way. But I did end up going around and stitching them in place as well just to make sure they didn't come un unperked it's hard to perk your bobbles and I didn't want them to come unperked so I I did I added a little bit of stitching but I like stitching um I think the effect's really beautiful you can see it's not the lamp there it's quite um it's got positive ease. It's not like massively baggy, but it's got positive ease. It looks nice with skinny jeans. It's maybe not so much one to wear with dresses, although that hasn't stopped me. I've worn it with dresses. And for the buttons, the buttons were a little bit of a trial. I couldn't think of any that I liked. And then I realised that all I wanted was a, another bobble. And I thought, can I make a button that's a bobble or a bobble into a button? And the bobbles into a button wouldn't work because they wouldn't be firm enough. But I, again, I think I saw this online. I'm not going to claim credit for this. It might have been Pinterest. I saw somebody getting little washers and making buttons and I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. So I went to our um, local DIY shop and I bought lots of different sized washers. I think they thought I was a bit crazy and uh, didn't they, they wouldn't have thought it was for buttons. And then I just stranded the, well, the, um, the cumulus and the, the Aran around, sort of went woo -doo -doo -doo, like you would if you're making a pom-pom and then just use them as buttons so i'm really really happy oh, the gapy there in general i don't know why that pulls in anyway it's unfortunately placed but that does pull in if i could do it again i might do even more buttons might be nice with even more but anyway i'm really really pleased with how it turned out and it's one of those cardigans you can just drape over whatever you're wearing if it's a bit chilly and it's just beautiful and i think it's quite the elegant design wintry and lovely so that is my magnolia bloom cardigan moving on to my next finished object finished object is this we will not see the owner wearing it they're a little bit shy this is the carter hoodie by kim hargreaves or hargreaves is how you pronounce it i only see her name written down Oh, do I have to put this on to show you? Possibly. This is the Carter hoodie. It's hard to see. I know the pattern. It's in, uh, knitted in Rowan soft brush. Still hold on. I've got it written down here. Rowan. 
brushed fleece, I think it's in charcoal. It's got a really nice pocket. See the edging there, and a sort of garter stitch edging. It's got quite a wide rib. It's this is size extra large. My child, my eldest, isn't the tall, they're not really big or anything, but they wanted a really baggy, cozy hoodie, and I think this does fit the bill. And I know that it's got a lot of wear, it's exactly what they wanted, they are very happy with it and they've worn it a lot and it is very cozy. And the idea was that I would knit it and it would be like I was giving them a hug wherever they went, whenever they were hanging around in parks with their friends, <laughs> which they don't do as much now because they're 16. So yeah, but yeah, very, very pleased with this. I would recommend it if you've got any teenagers that want a pattern, it's worth considering because it, it's a bit boring to knit, but it's quick. I think I knitted it in, hold on, I've got it all, I've got a cheat sheet here. Or I forget. Oh, I didn't write it down. I think I did use quite large needles. I think it would have been sevens or eights millimetres, that is. And it's it's knitted in reverse stockinette as well, so reverse stock and stitch, so you can see there. That's the, the what would normally be the wrong side, but I think the texture's lovely. You could easily have it the right side, but I think this makes it less obvious that it's a nitty nitty knitted garment. And that is the Carter hoodie. I recommend it. I was really relieved to get this off the needles because I started knitting this a year ago. Then I got my little elbow injury whilst I was knitting this. And then I got a bit of a mental block thinking, what if I knit it again? What if it injures me again? Because I was using my child goo needles with the metal needle and this is sort of fluffy. It's like blown, I think, alpaca. And it was sliding. And that might have put extra pressure on my joints as I was doing it. So... I used, I just went and used, I think I just used plastic needles for this in the end. Oh no, it was bamboo with a little circulars with a little plasticky wire, just to try and make sure the yarn didn't slip as much to put less pressure on everything. And it worked fine. And I was just really pleased to get it done for them to get some wear out of this it this winter. So that's that. Finished quite a lot. I also finished, oh, but I haven't got it here they're upstairs somewhere. I finished my socks. I was making the Sew Basic socks. I'm not certain I totally followed the, the pattern. I did start off following the pattern with the stitch count, but then I sort of went off and did my own thing with the heel um, based on an old vanilla sock pattern that I've got. Um, I used, it was like paint box yarns and I forget the colourways. So none of this is much use, but I will put a picture in here of the finished socks. I was doing them for me and then I tried them on and they weren't, they were a little bit, I don't know, they, they, they were a bit loose, I think, at the top. And I was like, I wasn't that bothered. And uh, my partner, James, he uh, he caught sight of them and his eyes lit up because he likes colourful things and mismatched things. And he tried them on, but they were too small because I'm like a size four and he's a size, oh gosh, like a size 10. And uh, so I said, do you want me to make these longer and give them to you and he was like yes please so I slightly reluctantly but it didn't take that long I ripped out the the toe because they're top down the pattern I ripped out the toe and then just knitted them up another like inch longer or whatever it is that you needed I, I looked it all up and measured and everything and then finished them off a little bit longer and now he is the happy owner of another pair of socks so that's two I've knitted him and I know he really appreciates them and he wears them a lot so that worked quite well, but I still need to find some nice socks to knit for myself. And maybe I should just do some fancy lace socks because I really love them. I just really hate knitting them. The last time I knitted a pair of socks, my dad and I complained about them for about 18 months. <laughs> but maybe I won't complain as much if they're for me, if I'm being a selfish knitter. We'll see. I've got plenty to knit on at the moment, so I don't need to be knitting any more socks right now. But that's definitely on my little list in my head. Anyway, we digress. We'll move on to whips. I'm going to do the one that's right next to me first. This is very much what I'm working on at the moment. It's nothing to do. Sometimes I do at the end of my episode, I nearly always do a swip, a soon to be whip, and it's patterns I've got my eye on, something I've got the wool for, all of my plans. <laughs> and I talk about them and then I keep the wool and don't knit them and see something else and then think I'll do that later. So I tend to dot about a lot. So no one, I, didn't, I don't think this was even on my radar last episode, but... 
I got it in my head that I really wanted to make a kofta and, and an all over colour work, big baggy cardigan, because I just think they're really cool. And I really like Inga, Knitting Traditions podcast Inga, and she'd knitted one recently in green and cream and it was just so stunning. So I went through Ravelry and I, I looked up koftas all over colour work and I went, I trawled through so many patterns looking for a similar one because I couldn't quite work out from what I'd seen of um, Knitting Traditions where that pattern had come from, although it probably wasn't the notes at the bottom. But I watch YouTube on my telly, so it's hard to scroll through notes. Anyway, I went through all of Ravelry just looking, because I used that as inspiration, looked through loads of patterns. All the ones I liked were Rauma, and they were either out of print or weren't in English. Or, you know, when I clicked the website link, the page wasn't there, um, or I couldn't find them in English. And then I thought, well, I'm being ridiculous. If I really like what Inga wore, I need to go and find out exactly what the pattern was. So I went on Instagram and did a little bit more trawling. And anyway, I've managed to find the pattern and find the book that the pattern was in. So it's Christmas, so I've just spent loads of money on wool for me, obviously. I have got the hand knits from Rauma book. And it's this one, but with a round top that I want to make. Well, it's sort of this one, actually. I think my white, my colours are inverted. So blue's white and white's blue. But yes, I got this book. It's by Bente Presterud and it's Hand Knits from Rauma, 30 new takes on traditional Scandinavian designs. There's some gorgeous patterns in here. You'll have to excuse me. It's sitting in my Coco Knits project sort of book thing. And I am having so much fun. I've got this magnetic Coco Knits book. I don't know if you can see and then things stick on there and I can put like these and then if you put the magnetic sheets between the pages, you can use these to sort of keep track of where you are in a colour work pattern. The way it's written is it assumes that you know what you're doing. So it gives you, I think, four different little charts and it gives you like the amount of stitches that you cast on. And then I'm knitting it in the round from the bottom up and it just says do chart this like B and then D and then C and then and it tells you that's not right, but it, it tells you what to do, how long to knit it. It's totally steeped. This is the first time I've ever knitted a pattern that requires steaking. And I've only got four steak stitches in the middle, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I know some people leave like eight or 10. <laughs> but I am knitting with very woolly wool. So I'll stop talking about it and I'll show you first. This is as far as I have got. Ooh, it's curling up a bit there. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really, really enjoying this. It's so fun. I keep just admiring it and cooing over it. And it's so addictive because every time you do a round, you just want to see what the next round looks like because it's, it's part the, the pattern is sort of coming together and revealing itself. It's massive. I wanted it massive. Totally, totally ripping off fingers idea for this. But, you know, it's it's I think it's meant to be big. There's the steaks steak stitches. I don't know if I'm doing them right. For those of you who've never steeped before, they will be cut. This will all be cut open when it's done. And then I'll stitch them back down. Oh gosh, I'm a bit nervous about that, but I'm going to give it a go. This is very woolly wool that I'm using. It's very sticky wool, so I'm, you know, I think it will be okay. I'm sure it will. I am using Jamieson's, I'm looking for a label from somewhere. Jamieson's of Shetland double knitting. I really like their wool. Um, they're a bit, I use them quite a lot. For, I've used, the, I use this for my Alaska sweater as well. I think it's lovely for colour work. And the colours I'm using are natural, I think it's natural white and petrol blue. I had to do blue and white. I would have liked to have done something different and more imaginative than the picture, but I just love the chintzy thing. <laughs> my dinner plates have got blue and white on them, so I, I had to do that. I just love my blues. As I'm knitting it, I really think it would look really nice in a white and like a magenta or something. That would have been quite a modern way to, to knit it as well, but uh, I'm really happy. This, I'm, I'm always knitting it for the sake of just knitting colour work, I think. I don't even, I have no need for a um, giant oval all over colour worked cardigan but then I do think it'll be useful when it's knitted it's going to be like a weekend throw on the top of anything just cosy 
woolen cardigan and it's quite thick because it's two strands of double knitting together. The recommended weight, it, it, a lot of the Rauma yarns are recommended in this. It's tricky, trickier for me to get hold of Rauma yarns being in the UK. It's a lot cheaper and easier for me to get hold of yarns that are, are local just because of complications with shipping at the moment. But um, that's another story. But the Rauma yarn I think it uses is a sport weight. So it's in between double knitting and four ply. And I did swatch with double knitting, Jameson's of, Jameson's of Shetland, and I also swatched with my four ply that I've got the, the spin drift, uh, which I used for my Unst cardigan. I did swatch with that. And my gauge was very much in between because, you know, sport weight is in between those two weights. But I opted for a needle size. Oh, God, no, it's the same needle size. I think I've got the same needles. I've opted for the slightly thicker double knitting. I've pretty much got gauge. I might be knitting a tiny bit bigger, but I, I don't mind because I want it oversized anyway, because I thought I do want it cosy. I want it warm and I want that nice thick fabric. It's not... It's a bit stiff, like colour work is, and this is curling up. I'm hoping blocking will fix that, but if it doesn't, I'm going to go to Hobbycraft or something and find some lovely tape and, and just stitch and, and make sure it lies flat. I don't know if I've missed something. I mean, the pattern does say only four rows of rib, or four rounds of rib before you go to the colour work. Um, and that's what it looks like in the pattern. So whether I've... I don't know if I've missed a trick. I could have put the odd little pearl in here and it would probably would have stopped it from curling and no one would have noticed, but that's it. Anyway, it doesn't matter either way. I love it. I'm so happy. I think a round was taking me about 30 minutes at one point, but I'm getting in the swing of it now. And uh, it's taking a long time each round, but not quite half an hour. <laughs> um, there's hundreds of stitches. It's so fun. So this is my little Christmas knitting fun that I'm having here. I would go through the book and I might do next time, but my Coco Knits metallic thing is just sandwiched and it's all a bit precarious. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. I've got fluff going in my nose, I think, from the wall. My next whip, I'm a little bit stuck on this, but I'll show you. I think I mentioned this last time. This is my Sorrel. This is as far as I've got. It's a design by Wool and Pine, knitted in the round top down. I am using, what I'm using is this, it's gorgeous. It is Temporal Spin and it's called Dragon Scale. And it is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I just love the subtle sort of greens and golds and sort of purpley blushes in it. It's just gorgeous. I love that. You strand the yarn with one strand of mohair for this pattern. Of course I'm using fibre spades. I'm not sponsored by fibre spades, I just really love the cumulus. Um, so of course I wanted to use cumulus. This is what the wool looks like when it's all wound up. And I couldn't decide what shade of of um, fibre spates of cumulus to use with this because I love this I mean maybe I shouldn't have picked this for the for the pattern because I love it so much I don't want anything to change about it I did look in Yarndale and I looked at a dark green but that was obscuring the colours and then a kind lady suggested that I use um, it's called pearl and it has got a tiny little pinky blush to it and she said that might look nice with that because the pink might bring out the green and, and she, if this was thinner, she might have been right. But I did swatch. I did loads of swatches. I was so good for this. But this is what happened to it when I swatched. Now, some people might like that, but I'm not really a pastel person at the moment. And I just think that's not, you're not getting the beauty of this in that. It just went a bit, I think it went a bit real. I think from a distance it would just look grey. Anyway, then I tried my, I've got my favourite, which is, I don't know if I've got it here, a little bit of this. I love the Storm Cloud. Uh, so I tried it with that. That was quite nice. I did like that, but I'm using Storm Cloud for absolutely everything. It was all right, but I do think it sort of just made it grey. And that wasn't what I wanted, although it was a contender. Then I tried to mix it with black. 
<laughs> just got loads of colours in the end. That's a bit of fortune. Um, yeah, so there it is with the black. Now that was quite nice. I don't know if it's picking up the colours there, but it, it's very, very subtle. And I think from a distance it would just look back black. So it was a possibility. Then I tried blue. Like there's an indigo. I don't know if you can even see the difference between the indigo and the black, but that was nice as well. Then <laughs> I got a bit excited. I tried the aubergine, the purple there and i really really liked how that looked so then i tried it with the slightly lighter one i'm gonna have to do a color work sweater in just fiber space cumulus i think because this is just ridiculous how much i've got it's a nice problem to have i'm not complaining what's this one called is it plum thistle not plum this is thistle ah oh, so pretty i really like this color but when i mixed it in with the green i don't know if you can see the colours were not bringing out the best in each other. Finally, I think it's finally, yeah, I tried this. This is a colour that you know I, I love. I've knitted, I keep knitting this, like a teal, like a turquoisey, yummy teal. God, I love that colour. A um, bit like the one that I knitted my nightingale pullover in recently. And I tried that with it, but this just seemed to overpower it. Can you see? I don't even know if I'm making sense. I hope I am. So, the purple one this one one and that is what i have used then i was doing the the pattern is is really clever it's like you sort of as you knit you do these really big stitches that go over like four rows and as you can see they're really pretty i decided oh well there's a fade and recommended so why don't i use some of my is it in here yes the tiny bit left this is Life in the Long Grass. It's a uh, silk and merino and I got it for my so faded pullover that I knitted ooh, a couple of years ago now and I had loads left. I used this in my, in the farewell section of my Elsk dress as well. So you might recognise it from that. It's so pretty. And I thought, oh, I've got enough. I've got a ball like that. I thought, oh, why don't I start off with that? And then that'll really contrast with the purple. And I know that the the pattern will really stand out. So that's what I did. You can see that. And it does look really pretty. I really like it. And then I'm starting to run out of this. So I thought, well, I need to fade into the, the yarn that I want to use, the beautiful yarn that I've been dying to use. And I'm just not sure. It just doesn't look as good. <laughs> and I don't think it's that the colour doesn't look nice. I just think this pattern is suddenly getting lost. So I'm a little bit stuck with this. I haven't tried it on yet. That's how unmotivated I am by at the moment. The fabric feels soft and luxurious and gorgeous and I think it will fit if you do that. It's going to look really nice. It is, oh, it's going to look nice. But I'm wondering, you know, I just, I just don't like what's going on. This just doesn't work. But I'm wondering if I should, I can't really rip back because I haven't got enough of this to, to finish down to where the pattern stops because the pattern stops around here. But I am wondering if I either split the strands or just use a strand and just stitch some in like every other row just to let the fade, I don't know, just, just to let it mix in a bit more. I don't know if that makes sense just to try. I mean, I try to sort of fade it in as every other row for quite a while, but I think these sort of quite suddenly go from this colour to this colour and I don't know if it works. If you have any ideas, if you think it's all right, let me know. I know it's hard when I haven't actually tried it on. Um, yeah, so and I, I still think, am I using the right yarn? Because I don't know if I'm now still losing. Yeah, I don't know if I'm just losing the greenness and the beautifulness of this or whether it, it is working. That was a very confused ramble. But that's how far I am with that. It is actually further than, than you'd think. And once I decide, it'll be a lovely, easy, I think. Once once I'm through with the pattern, it'll be, I think it's reverse stocking stitch all the way down the body and the sleeves. And, you know, I'm really, I think the pattern's really well written. Um, it's really fun. I am enjoying it. I'm just a bit like, it's not what I pictured. I think this is the thing. It's It's evolved into something else and that's okay. And I really like purple. Um, I just don't know if I should have cho I should have chosen, I think, a different yarn that I maybe wasn't as 
attached to that would have let me experiment a bit more because as soon as I experiment and move away from the original yarn I go oh no you know but that's what I wanted um again nice problem to have though I just love the color so much and I don't know what to do and um yeah I'm, I'm enjoying don't feel sorry for me I'm enjoying the problem but that is on the back burner whilst I obsess over my Archer's cardigan and then it made this redundant but we'll get to that later <laughs> I've just taken over this living room just with knitting everyone's fed up they just they have to come in and move balls of wool to sit down okay so that was my work in progress number two I'm still working on my half and half wrap housed in Mel's knitting bag <laughs> I have, this is taking forever. Normally I'm really quite fast at knitting, but this is just, I mean, I knew it wouldn't be short term, but my goodness, right. This is how far I've got. <laughs> Can you see how massive that is? I didn't think it would be this big. I'm like, oh, I deliberately opted for the big size thinking, yeah, no, I want a really big one, but yeah, <laughs> it's big with bells on. So I've done the black, my first color, I'm now knitting the second triangle because two triangles next to each other made with short rows using wrap and turns. I've done the black is Yorkshire Spinners. I think it's Yorkshire Spinners. West Yorkshire Spinners, Night Sky. It's all pretty sparkly, lovely. And this is Cumulus, Fiber Space Cumulus in Storm Cloud. Now, the reason why I thought I've got to lay off the Storm Cloud for my, my other jumper. I love this colour though. Um, they're strangely compatible. They shouldn't be compatible. They have totally different feels. But with the fluffiness of this, they do end up with slightly similar weights. And this might be a tiny bit scratchy with the metallic thread. This won't be. It'll be nice next to my skin. And I love the idea of this is that, you know, you can, you'll end up being able to fold it over to wear it like that. So have both colours. Or you can just pick one colour to be top. I think it'd be really versatile. And really warm and then you can also use it as a blanket i just yeah i'm enjoying this i'm not saying i'm not enjoying it it's garter stitch i like garter stitch it's a really good one to pull out during meetings or any time that you just don't want to think about anything and you just want it to be easy it's getting a bit harder to cart around now it's just massive but that's as far as i am with that and i'm trying not to be impatient i can be a bit impatient but uh it's getting there slowly but surely that is my final whip i'm being quite self-controlled with only three at the moment actually on to the swips the <laughs> soon to be whips and yeah i was looking at another festive i wanted a traditional festive yoked sweater for next year whilst i'm in the christmasy mood i thought i'll look and research and think of what cardigan sorry what jumper i want to knit next november because I'd really like to have more Christmas jumpers and be able to just rotate them for different parties and things like that. So I have found, I'll put a picture up of it, the Festive Yoke Pullover by Skeen Deer Knits. And I love some of the projects on this one. In, in the original photo, it's like red and white and it's all very monochrome. Um, but it's got loads of different motifs. There's Christmas trees, I think the Santas, the stars, there's uh, reindeer, there's all sorts. And you can sort of make, I think the idea is that you build your own motif up and you can have it just up here or you can have it all over the colour work, I mean. And I really like the ones where there's more than one colour. So yeah, I'm, I've got that one definitely on my list for next year. And uh, so that's not a soon to be whip, it's a you know, soon to be whip in the grand scheme of things, I suppose it's soon to be whipped, but you know, it'll be for 11 months time. But that's what I'm thinking, because I need to think of it now, because if I just think of it in December when I'm in the mood, I won't have time to, to knit a proper, you know, bells and whistles Christmas jumper. But that is, this was a quick knit, you see. Um, but that is my plan, because I think I've enjoyed wearing this so much. I've really, really got into it this year. Not normally like, I, I do like Christmas, but I normally sort of let it go over my head a little bit, but I've um, really enjoyed being festive this year and wearing, I've worn this a lot. And I'd really like to have other Christmas jumpers, I think, that I can wear and enjoy. So that would be my plan for next year. I've also <laughs> got sidetracked by a pattern called the Easy Eyelet Sweaters. 
Easy Eyelet Sweater Scarf and that is by We Are Knitters and I found that on Instagram and it's it looks so fun. It's a long like piece of knitting with two like wrist sleeve cuff bits on the end and the idea is you can wrap it round yourself and then do that to there and make it into a cardigan or you could probably just have it as a scarf. I really really like the look of that and I think it would be so good with I've, I've got a lot of dresses I think it'd be lovely over the top of dresses you could even do a posh one if you had a posh dress um I would I'd like to try it in I think it's an Aran weight yarn or a worsted weight you need and I think it could work well with the Lily Kate makes um she's done her axis yarn uh, I used the axis yarn in cream or white for my um be thankful cardigan I love that cardigan, I wear it all the time. I did have issues with pilling. Um, I don't know if that's because it wasn't dyed and I know there was a, there was always gonna be an extra halo or whether it's just me. Um, that was a slight issue, but I mean, I, I, I love the colors and, and I, I think the, the weight and the drape and the luxeness of that yarn would be really nice for this. Um, what's it called again? Easy Eyelet Sweater Scarf. So I would really, really like to knit that it may be next year by the time I do it but you never know I think it's one of those things where once I got the wool I would probably just go nuts and just get it done within like a week or something um but that's definitely on my radar and that looks like a really fun interesting different pattern if you're interested have a look at that I also Facebook advertising so effective I'm a big fruity knitting fan and I did see their previous episode uh, had Knitting for Olive featured and, and that was a really lovely interview and I've never tried Knitting for Olive yarns and I thought, oh, I must keep that in mind because they were talking about all the different colours. And then the little Facebook elves that probably are listening to me, I'm sure, can hear me. Um, it came up on my feed, knitting for Olive, free shipping on your first order. And I think it was last night, actually. And I was like, yes. And then I just looked at some of the shades. Uh, it was still on Facebook. And I saw one shade called, I think it's, is it Plum Rose? I'm obsessed with Plum today, aren't I? It's either Plum Rose or Dusty Rose. And, and I was like, oh, that's not the sort of colour I normally go for, but that's pretty. And I was like, oh, it's like six euros, 50 or four. Oh, there's quite a lot of meterage because it's a four ply merino. Oh, and then I just bought a load of it. <laughs> so well done. Knitting for Olive, well done, Facebook. Very effective. Um, I'm not sorry either. Just before Christmas, I was like, yeah, that, this is a brilliant idea. So I've ordered a load of that. And I think with that, I normally decide on the sweater then get the yarn but I had loads of sweaters on my shortlist anyway so with that assuming when it comes that it's nice and it's going to suit me the colour I mean I am going to knit the I can't say this Skeel Gra Gra I'll, I'll put it up here by hold on Al I can't read my own writing Ale Biona McLaughlin it looks really pretty I love all of the projects that have been knitted up. I would like mine with long sleeves. It's a lightweight sweater with a really beautiful, delicate lace yoke. And I could see it being very wearable, nice for work, um, nice for sort of going out. Um, yeah, so that that's on my, my SWIP list. I have, my SWIP list is a lot longer than any other list, so I, I might never get round to all of these. Well, I hope I will someday, but uh, part of the fun of knitting is just thinking what you're going to do next. I also still have the Romance Cardigan by Trico Design on my list, on my radar. I do need a black cardigan in my wardrobe. Black's not really my colour, but it goes with everything. So I'm looking over there because I know that I, I got a load of, well, it wasn't free. I, I put a donation in, but we had a, there was like a yarn clearance going on at my knitting group. And there was this bag. It felt like real wool, just thin black wool with no label, like a packet of it. And I thought well, I could strand that with my cumulus a nice black cumulus uh, from fiber spates and strand that together for this cozy elegant lovely black cardigan it's still on my list still haven't done it part of the reason i haven't started that is because even though i need it i have knitted a lot of black recently i've got black in my half and half wrap i've got black in my cart at my child's carter hoodie and have i knitted something else black recently? i feel like i have i might not have done so i just thought i can't take any more black not right now but I will do it, I think, because it's one of those things where I, it's not the most, it, so it won't be that fun. I don't want to be rude about the pattern. The pattern, look, I love the detailing of the the little button band, but it's going to be, I think, fairly straightforward and one that I could just do sitting in front of the television and um, 
but I need to finish my sewer before I do that because soon the sewer is going to be straightforward and I'm going to be lost for what straightforward thing to knit next. So that's still on my sweat list. And also the Maud blouse is still very much there. I'm dying to knit that actually. But and now it's milder. I'm thinking, oh, I could. But before when I got it and I was about to knit it, I thought, well, it's too cold. I won't wear it for ages because it's too cold because it's got short sleeves. Um, so the pearl, <laughs> fibre spades cumulus that I mentioned, I got loads of this because I it's it's a uh, the Maud blouse is patterned by um, Fable Knitwear. It's now in English. Yay! I really need to learn lots of different languages because we shouldn't be forcing them to publish everything in English. Um, but she has, and I'm so happy. So I'm going to knit that in this pearl colourway because I've got lots more of that. Oh, it's so soft. And I just think it'll look really... It, it, it needs a simple colour. I, I really did consider the aubergine for it, but I think this will be lovely. And it'd be nice to wear to work with sort of a, a pair of sort of checky trousers or a skirt. I haven't knitted a blouse before, so that is also on my list. My swip list. Oh, the other thing I should mention, my lovely trainees at work. I've got a really good bunch. And for my Christmas present, we had a secret Santa. And this is by Mad Monkey Knits. They've given me this, it's a slipper pattern. And they've given me two balls of Viking Garn Nature Garn to knit slippers with. So I wonder if I could do that, maybe even felt them. I don't know if that's the plan. I think it's Norwegian yarn. And I can't understand anything that's on the label, but it feels like wool. I think it's his natural garn. That suggests to me it's nature's wool. <laughs> that's what I'm having. I could look it up. But anyway, lovely colours, slippers. I've always wanted to knit some slippers. So that is something that I will be working on at some point as well. Just looking at that and smiling at it on the table. Um, yeah, so it's Christmas tomorrow. I'm going to knit all over Christmas, then work for some of Christmas and then be off in January. So that'll be nice and I'll get lots of knitting done. Yeah, I hope you're having a lovely Christmas Eve and that you have a lovely Christmas and you get to knit on all the things that you love. Uh, do let me know what you're doing, if you've got any Christmas knitting or any Christmas jumper recommendations for next year that I can have a look at. And I will see you next time. You can find me as Meliart13 on Instagram or Meliart on Ravelry. And I think that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.